So welcome to Biz Coach and Coffee. I am your host, Biz Coach Steve Feld. Today we have another fantastic guest with us. We have Zola. Now, I have been talking with Zola on and off for years. She's amazing. We're going to get to know her a little bit better. But Zola, she created the Success Triad System for Creative Entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. She's a transformational business coach, consultant, and mastermind mentor who helps creatives, holistic, heart-centered entrepreneurs embrace their the business adventure that brings their visions into reality. Now, Zola's created and ran successful mastermind groups for committed creative entrepreneurs since 2011. She also delivers business visioning retreats and trainings. I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. So please, let's welcome Zola. Nice to have you here. Thanks, Steve. That's great. Can you hear me? Is this a good? Yes. I should have asked that before. Yep. Thank you. Well, great. Well, thanks for being here. And first, you know, I know I gave a good intro, but can you tell the audience a little bit more about what you're doing and who you help? And Happy to. Um, so I am a lifelong entrepreneur, self-employed person, third generation. I have been mostly in the design and construction fields. And then I branched into my own art and have actually had very successful uh, ventures in each of those. Now, the art, what you do as far as how you weigh what is success in that is very personal, as I feel is appropriate for us to think in our business in general. You know, I, I, we need to be uh, thriving. We need to answer the call to what we are here to do and hopefully have balance in our life. And so that's the most important thing to me is, you no, know, I don't serve workaholics. They won't be happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm particularly good for people who have had some problems with certain things I've identified. I call it the success triad. Certain things that people who think more globally, right brain or holistically. Now, right brain is a term that talks about that creative side of the brain, right? So a little bit less analytical in your fundamentals. It means that there's things that happen. You recognize it in some super creative people that, for example, time can be a real challenge. <laughs> it's right. not because they're dissing you and not wanting to show up for their commitment to you. It really isn't. It's that their brain literally functions differently and the experience of what's real um, well, it's different. It's just as different as whether or not you think a heron and a chickadee should act the same or respond the same. We're all very uniquely wired. And that brain-based understanding really informs and helps. Oh, absolutely. That's what makes it all so wonderful in the business world. In my world, is business. So in the business world, Everyone is so unique and they offer so many different things and they all think, hey, my business is so unique. But in reality, it's like you have the same struggles, same problems, same challenges as the person next door to you. Even though we're totally unique. Totally exactly. different. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And because you, I know, Steve, you work with primarily smaller entrepreneurs entrepreneurs, not, not miniature, but um, I, uh, some people refer to micro businesses, which is a little bit more where my focus has been. Uh, people, I don't like the term solopreneur because I really truly feel it's a misnomer. There's nobody who's thriving, successful, and happy in their work if they're working like an island and doing it all themselves. And we need to really be socially engaging all the time. And that means caring for one another, hopefully, right? Okay, so what I started to say, I'll, I'll shut up and let you direct these questions <laughs> in a moment, is that I know that you serve people who have ambitious and larger scale business vision, and you're able to take them there because you're able to evaluate, analyze, do these incredible um, things with software that allow people to really identify what keys need to be in place or shifted for them to be able to succeed. And I really value that. Uh, see, that software approach 
is something I'm real tech friendly, but I am not <laughs> the software lady, right? So thank heavens you're there. I'm here. Thanks. So it's it's funny you mentioned about the the left brain, the right brain, those kind of things. So you know, my whole background is operations and marketing. So I have both sides of my brains always conflicting <laughs> it, it, and I love it because I'm also ambidextrous in many areas in my life so it's always been a great I always once I embraced it realizing you know what business there's rules of business and then there's the unwritten rules of business and then there's the creative rules of business I like to play in the creative rules of business keep it legal though <laughs> but business should be fun and creative uh -huh. Do you see that a lot in people that they're just, they're creative, but they're not having fun? Totally. I mean, that's a lot of why I stepped into this vacuum, because what I saw was all kinds of people have the sense of calling or a great gift or a healing practice. They get out of a major commitment to being excellent as a practitioner, and they have zip, zelch, nada in the way of preparation or mindset for being a business person. And so unless that gets into alignment, they're going to struggle. Mm -hmm. And then there's other things too, you know, there's cultural value oriented things that for some people, um, they, I, I feel like what, what you described that thing about being able to honor that you have this creative side and there are rules for that functional success secrets. And then there's also business rules. I believe that we're on the brink of becoming a culture that is able to make business happen in a more um, equitable, I don't mean equitable, uh, a balanced way in which the feminine, which is really what the right brain, left brain difference is, it, I'm not talking about men and women, but there's a masculine, more analytical way that our brain can function well, which is a natural fit for the business world as it has evolved in our culture. But then there's all these incredible gifted people with very essential and valuable things. So how oh, do absolutely. we do that? Do both. Yeah. We, we need to learn to do both or bring both in on, online in our business by teaming up with other people. So I love that collaboration and that's where you and I got to meet. Exactly. And you brought up about masterminds. And I know we've talked about it. I had a mastermind group was all artists. So all Did creatives. You? And I was actually the only non creative in the whole place. So I can't see a, a blank canvas envision something on it, where I I'm very jealous and envious that they see things on that canvas, and then they bring it to life. But they and were jealous did. of me. Like me, I can look at financial statements at a business and bring mm -hmm. it and see the future possibilities. And I can see a clear roadmap, whereas they mm -hmm. can't. So it was like, we both were creative in our own unique ways in different areas. What do you think of yeah. business owners who get stuck at, you know, to get unstuck? Can, how can they get that creative juices flowing? Oh gosh, you're, you're taking me somewhere. <laughs> I wanted to speak to what you said, but I'll, I'll, I'll shift. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to honor that you actually are a really creative thinker to be able to step into being a mentor leader in a business world for creatives, because that's interesting. You it's have the unique. blank canvas of a potential that you brought them in to mm -hmm. splash together into something new. So, so how do we do what we do? Um, what uh, repeat the question a little bit? Oh, people who are stuck mentally. Yeah, how do you get that creative juices the... flowing again? Mm -hmm. Well, one of my favorite ways is definitely masterminding. Which even if you're creative, there's something expansive and grounding to get into a circle with other people who have their uh, ex expertise, their experience and perspective that's not from inside your story and they can witness what you're doing they can encourage you and they can also inspire you with an outside picture of what's possible that you might not be seeing because one of the questions i always ask myself is what's my blind spot here because i know that we are all walking around with blind spots all the time <laughs> and so when we get together in a group like that we all see different facets of the magical what you're creating. 
So that's one thing, right? Connection with other minds, not getting isolated in your own head all the time. And what you think is what has to happen. Great. I think we're going to touch a little bit more on masterminds. We're going to take a short break for our sponsor. We'll be right back on Biz Coach and Coffee. This episode is sponsored by Spotlight Books. Get your expert book completed in 30 days. If you don't have an expert, lead magnet book about you and how you serve your market, then visit www.spotlight-books.com. Link is also in the show notes. Put a spotlight on your expertise. And we're back speaking with Zola and we're getting into masterminds. Now I know Zola has been running masterminds since 2011. I've facilitated masterminds, all different kinds, <laughs> online, virtual, in-person, multiple in-person ones. Uh, we just talked about doing one for just artists. And I want Zola, give us a little bit more for those people who don't understand what a mastermind is, but the impact that it creates for you in your business and in your life. Mm, thank you. My favorite thing to talk about, <laughs> um, actually to experience. And I, if I may, I'll share a little story in a moment about that. But what happens in mastermind cannot be duplicated. You can't get it from any other experience. And that's what's so extraordinary. It's the combination of the people, but it's also intention. The power of a group of minds coming together with clear focus that we want something. So what are we here for in a mastermind? Typically, it varies according to the group, right? And what they set it up for or the facilitator has. For me, I like to facilitate a mastermind that's for people who are really committed to their business success. And yet it's not simply because they want to be successful in business, but because what they are doing matters. They have a sense of purpose that's bigger than themselves. They're here to serve and to have an impact. And there are just things that can be possible, both collaborative, uh, sharing of resources, networks, that sort of thing that comes when you have a group of people that you know and trust and like each other and you've established a connection where they see what you're doing. Others who value your path in your business enough to give you their time and attention. And you get your time in a mastermind in which others bring what they have into a light upon your focus and your work. And so it's often called the hot seat, but there's the time where you are the the one who gets to benefit from <laughs> wisdom, skills, expertise, understanding, insight, uh, resources, so much that people share. But there's that other magic thing. When we have a combined focus and intention that is actually coming from our, our sense of self and our best nature, because I think that's what the best masterminds do. They bring out the sense of commitment to others' well-being and success as well as our own, and it requires you to lift your game a little bit and to your perception. What happens when a bunch of people come together, and it's always small, in, in my experience as best, you know, like under 10, um, is that something else is created. It's almost like there's a, a life within it. Um, Napoleon Hill, who made Masterminds first famous, talked about that term, that quality of another kind of mind that lifts and holds and sort of directs something else, something magical, unexpected that often happens as the mastermind. So it's the like higher purposeful, organized intention that comes together and expresses with a group. That's pretty amazing. That's I know a great you way know. I've heard. Yeah, and it, I always tell people, it's like, if you never experience a good mastermind group, and I'm saying good, good mm -hmm. is when everyone is engaged, everyone is there helping one another. A bad one is when someone clams up and says, I don't have any problems or I know everything. If you're going in with I know everything attitude, don't go to a mastermind group. You're not going to come out of it with anything and you're going to actually hurt everyone else who's in there. And I've seen... And I know you have too. I've seen some unbelievable magic that has occurred and transformed inside a mastermind group all over someone reframing 
someone's challenge and just asking this many questions. And exactly. it has opened up a whole new world. And, but it's not just for that individual, it's for the group. Mm -hmm. The stuff yes. I've, I learned stuff every week from mastermind groups. <laughs> and I wasn't doing any talking. <laughs> and it gives so that thing about feeding your creative juices what you just described that experience is like such a juicing powerful i'm getting out there and making this you know momentum really increase right. because it's inspiring and energizing and your exactly. focus gets really clear so I'll tell you, I actually have experienced Mastermind since before 2011, because a long time ago, um, I had a business in Santa Barbara, and I happened to be a, with a group of people that we decided to form a nonprofit, and it was unusual. These were all self-employed people. A couple of them were really high-level people in sales, um, sales consulting, um, but what we wound up creating in this process of deciding that we were going to do a nonprofit together was uh, truly it had all the qualities of a mastermind now we decided things in the most difficult way possible which was consensus meaning not not majority rules we had to totally agree and we had to thrash it out till we agreed on every significant choice sometimes you have consensus because you say the moving forward matters so I'll let go right. of my perspective yeah but anyway it was it wound up, we created an international conference that had hundreds of people come. And this was before the internet or a lot of wow. that. And I had not been part of something like that. I was so fortunate to be, I was in a business incubator. I was having a successful business experience and I had this mastermind group and we didn't call it that. We just had a purpose that was single and our way of processing what happened was not about ourselves alone and that's the most important thing for people when you have to apply to be in a mastermind that i run because i want to know that people are yeah. able to uh, care for the group that they're able to be in a facilitated mastermind and not have to run a conversation and that they're they can be pulled in if they're withholding a little bit you know all of us sometimes when things are hard well well some of us <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't agree more, getting the right people around the table. Yeah, yeah. So it's an interview process or a little bit of an application process anyway. Yeah. So that was powerful. And I, ever since I wanted to replicate that. And then later in my business life, and I learned about mastermind groups per se. Yeah. So. Yeah, I cannot re recommend it enough, folks. If you don't have a coach, consultant, a mentor, advisor, Find a good master, local mastermind group and get engaged. I kid you not. It will definitely change your business. It'll change your life. If you find the right set of people. And, you know, a lot of masterminds will let you test it. Here, come to one meeting. Yes. See if you can like, gel with the other members. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. Well, what, I'm, uh, what I have coming up, just to mention as far as testing, yeah. I decided to do a three-session um, experience for people. And that's that's a commitment on their part. And it's also uh, an opportunity to get something more out of it and to really see what you're committing to, because I like a bit longer term mastermind. There's all kinds of things, aren't there, that people call masterminds that are like, this doesn't, it's not what we're talking about. So um, four months is what I have for a short term mastermind, but the three times in sequence, getting to know uh, what it's like when you, over time, get acquainted and committed to listening and serving one another and letting yourself receive, be on the receiving end of that. It's very cool. Yeah, and that's one thing I think a lot of people don't expect in a mastermind cr group. And I'm telling you this now, and I'm sure you're going to agree with this, Zola, and that's the cold, hard truth. Oh, yes, we better get it. We're going to get it's not it. Worth, not worth anything if you don't get it. No, you're I mean, not going to get fluffiness. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might. If you do, some, it doesn't help. Look, it's all, not, all of us are the yeah. same. You give us fluffy review. Oh, you did great. We'll never learn. We'll never improve because right. we think, hey, we're, we're the best. But in a mastermind group, they should be pushing you. Just like a, a 
sport coach. They're always pushing you and help want you to do better. Exactly. And, you know, I've done a lot of experimenting on how to do a heart centered mastermind where, you know, if you're working masterminds with women, people who have their values of what is important today may not only be their bottom line and they may not be right. able to just brush all that aside without focusing here, like the interaction with the person in your office who's a stick in the wheel or whatever. <laughs> um, we have things that come up that require feelings to be addressed. And that, so that's what I mean by a heart center mastermind. It's, I don't exclude that. It's not only right now, today, we're going to be strategic and visionary in our bottom line. Um, so the thing that happened is that I found that there are a lot of groups where people get together with that idea that they're furthering their business, but they don't actually. Mm -hmm. For exactly what you said, people aren't comfortable, aren't choosing the difficult facts. So it's, yeah. it's got to be viable. It's got to be strategic. Yes, it's got to light you up also. Absolutely. Great. Well, Zola, you know I'm a giver. I know you're a giver. What is something that you can share with our tribe here today? I have something called the Transforming Time Toolkit. And you mentioned my success triad. These are the three things that I've identified that really holistic right brain people tend to slip up. And sometimes all three are in interfering. And one of them is mindset. Another one is actually being willing to get your strategy in place, planning and strategy. And the other is time, actually knowing how to optimize your day. So how do you really get into flow early and focus? Well, that's what excites me about planning with time as a friend. So the Transforming Time Toolkit will turn around a little bit around how some of those people who have a little struggle there. So, well, Excellent. Um, we will have the link for it in the show notes. So please take advantage of Zolo's offer. That is one thing I know with almost every business owner on the planet is we love the shiny objects and we need to focus and get in that flow, if you will. Artists, yes. when you're writing a book, you got to get in the flow because next thing you know, time becomes irrelevant and you're done with the book. So Hey, <laughs> I hope that happens to me. <laughs> I, the, the book is one that's on my, on my uh, bucket list, but I'm not taking it on. I don't know. So, well, yes, I know people. And, <laughs> you know, people, hey, they can I'll help ask you. you about that. <laughs> um, there was something else you just said about that. Oh, uh, you know, prioritizing is part of it. Big part of it. It's Absolutely. not enough to be in flow if you're focusing really well on the wrong things. There you go. But, yeah. but you have any last minute, last piece of advice for our our tribe here before we go? You know, of, of the things that are in the toolkit, you don't have to use the toolkit uh, that I have, but I encourage people to play around with mind mapping. It's really a very mm. cool way, especially if you're a whole, whole brain kind of processor to organize and see what you have on your plate. Get it all out there, out of your head. Don't have a list of 25 things. You know, just get things out of your head. But then today, I, I like the rule of five that Jack Canfield shared, but it's okay if it's even less. Choose your few things today. Exactly, yeah. folks. Keep it simple <laughs> and focus and get in that flow and you'll have great success. I want yes. to thank Zola. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And it's so cool. Love Thanks. what you do. Congratulations <laughs> you. on your podcast. I love it. Thank you. Well, folks, if you like this episode, please make sure you like it and subscribe so you can hear other fantastic experts to help you in your business journey. I want to say thank you from Biz Coach and Coffee. I am your host, Biz Coach Steve Feld, and we wish you and your business much success. We hope you enjoyed today's topic. If you'd like to discuss how you can apply these strategies in your business, let us know. This episode is sponsored by Spotlight. Get your own expert book written about you in 30 days. 
set yourself apart from the competition. Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. Also, feel free to give us your comments. We look forward to hearing from you on Biz Coach and Coffee.